Welcome along to uh, In Conservation With, um, my series which has been going on now for the last, well this is its second week I think, or maybe th getting into the third week, um, and it was an idea that I had the week before the first week, and it's kind of smart snowballed, we've got a ton of people um, coming up and had a few since, you know, before now, and uh, they're all great people, including Paul, so I'm really, really delighted. Um, as I said earlier, we're here to have a little bit of a masterclass on um, phone scoping. I mistakenly used to call it phonography. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, okay. but I got my wrist slapped and I had to quickly change it to phone scoping. So phone scoping it is. If there are, if there are any questions um, at any point, please um, let me know. By, as I said, by um, putting up your hand and you can then, um, you know, be sort of seen to. So without further ado, welcome along, Paul Hackett. Um, how's your Sunday, Saturday even going? It feels like a Sunday, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm very good. Um, just kind of spent a couple of hours hoping that I could have something in my garden to show you. I have, have quite a few birds and I've got quite a few nesting birds. Um, I've got nesting robin, blue tit, sparrow, and dunnock. Um, massive fight. I've, at the end of my gable is a little, little tiny hole and sparrows, and a, a male came in. And I wish I could have shown that. It was just mayhem. Feathers were coming out of the gutter. It's just crazy time. So I, I was hoping to, to give you something live. I've got a substitute. It, it's a bit of a surprise. But uh, hopefully we can we can we can get through this because I want people who, people who may already know me on this because I can't see the participants. I like to show people rather than talk it because I think showing demystifies it for me, David. Well, absolutely. I think you know they, it's true what they say: never work with animals or children. You know, one minute they're there, next minute when you turn the camera on, there's nothing to be seen. Um, yeah. Just to give you guys a background, Paul and I have known each other. Oh, I can't remember when I first met you. I just seem like I've always known you. It's been about. It's a good. It's a good few years, David. Yeah. And uh, I have to thank Paul because he originally um, showed me the ropes when I had a um, bridge camera. I was too afraid to take it off automatic, and I had it on automatic for about, you know, maybe a year. Um, and I met you, Paul, at the Northwest Bird Watching um, Festival up in Martin Mir. And within five minutes, you just knocked out a few things I needed to do. And then that was it. I never looked back since. And then we had a really lovely um, day um, a couple of years ago, maybe three, four years ago uh, in Essex, um, when we went to a couple of your local patches. And you taught me, you gave me the Jedi lesson on how to phone scope and again i've never looked back since it's just really i mean once you actually get to grips of it it's actually not too difficult at all but who am i to say this paul i mean how before we actually get into you know how to do it how have how, how have you how have you found yourself doing this well david it started maybe with the digiscoping it started in 1998 so i've been doing it in this country for 22 years now um, phone scoping, we'll just probably jump to that quickly. Um, probably been doing that about 10 years. Uh, and my first phone was a Nokia um, back in the day. And then unfortunately, I had a trip to Lithuania to see my friend, Joss, who's got a bit of a woodland and he's got woodpeckers in the winter. And I fell through the ice and my Nokia died. So the next purchase I made was my iPhone 4 that's what i bought so i've had a four six plus and now i've got a seven plus so with my background i have people who know me or may not know me i i kind of push the boundaries if somebody says you can't do it it's like a red rag to a bull for me and so with that i've done workshops i've traveled because obviously i primarily worked for carl zeiss uh, originally as the sales rep for the uk and obviously still kept my passion with that and now I've been with Cower uh, UK for 10 years as their digiscoping consultant, stroke ambassador, stroke dog's bodies, stroke what kind of label you want to put on it. Because basically I still enjoy that. So basically that's quickly to it. More, there's more, but that's, that's it in a nutshell. But before, so I try, just try to push the boundaries with it really. 
But before then, when did you first pick up a camera? When were you first sort of interested in photographing, or photography, shall I say, and, and, and secondly, photographing wildlife? Yeah, my, um, my background uh, from a birding point of view was twitching. And um, what happened was um, I ended up getting a old Leica Apo telescope with a 20 times eyepiece and I attached a high eight millimeter camcorder to, together. Um, but the magnification was just absolutely huge. Um, I then transferred over to a smaller Sony Handycam, attached it to the scope. And then we started the range of cameras, compact cameras that we went through, all of us went through the Nikon Coolpixes and such like. Um, going up to now, um, where I'm with Panasonic now as an ambassador and I use the Micro Four Third system as well as the foam scoping. So basically an all rounder, foam scoping, video scoping, and taking images with a, with a camera. So it's all there basically, that's 22 years taking it. Really, that's the background to what I do. Okay, well, okay, for those who may not be certain of what foam scoping is, can you in a nutshell say what it is? Tell us what okay, it. yeah, so what we have here is, That's your eyepiece from your scope. That's purely what you've got. So ideally you stick, slip your phone into an adapter, customized or other, handmade, and you basically essentially just join it up like that so that your phone is attached there and there. That is essentially how you join the adapter of, and with, the, with, the, with the phone. So people want to say, well, what's the actual situation what do you need so obviously you need from equipment point of view you need a telescope and i have very very straight honest views about this people say well i want to bird and i want to take pictures and i just say whatever your priority is if you're a birder first buy an angled scope if you're a photographer and i do get quite a few people who wear because they want the reach of what, what this foam scoping and digiscoping can do. So I suggest to them get a straight scope. Uh, eyepiece, for me, you need a zoom, a zoom eyepiece rather than a fixed piece. Um, we'll, come up, we'll, we'll bring on this word called vignetting or vignetting as it's called, where with dig, foam scoping or digiscoping, there is a limitation because it was not meant to be. So therefore, with the kit, we can, we can talk about that a bit further down. But essentially what you need is the scope, the eyepiece, the phone. You can either hand hold it, and I've got quite a few mates who are so skingy, they won't dip in their pocket and actually pay for a phone. So if somebody's just watching now and just wants to casually do it, this is how I will talk you through it. So for example, you've got the eyepiece and the eye cup on, on the scope. Basically what I would do is switch on the phone, bring the phone to it, and you'll see a little tiny bit of ray of light, circle of light. Keep that in the center. And what I tend to do is I use my fingers, just slightly proud, and I just lower it down, keeping it center. And with the other picture, I can reach around, touch the focus wheel, uh, and take a picture. So ideally, focus on the bird first, static, sharp as you can through your eye, make, it, make sure it's central. Place it on there, keeping the circle of light, going towards it, going towards it. And once you've got it on there, you can take your hand off, focus the wheel, and then take the picture. That's the most cheaper option of what most people do. And <laughs> there's a lot of my birdie friends in there. Now then, as we go up the scale of cost, I know that um, there's a number of YouTube videos how to make your own adapter for your own particular phone. Um, so that's probably the next cheapest way, maybe a four or five for a case and then some kind of plastic top that will go over and kind of a little bit of resistance on over your eye cup. Again, fiddly, but on the YouTube, it tells you how to do it. Then we move then into what we call the universal adapters. And there are a number of them on the market. I just happen to have a few of them here. So this one is the Viking one works very very simply is that inside there 
is a plastic and it constricts and makes the circle tighter onto your eyepiece so smaller or larger there's the actual way you line it up and then you have this button here where you can so the idea ideal thing is you put it in there put it in there make sure it's lined up and tighten it it's as simple as that so basically when you say, so when you say lined up you're talking about the your camera the actual lens of the camera is lined up with that hole so is that tiny hole yeah can you see it yeah right okay so that's that's a camera like this i've got an iphone 11 with three of them there will that work or do i have to line up one of the holes one right the lenses so go techie for two for two seconds You've got a two times, hold it back up, David. You've got a two times on there. You've got a wide angle and an extra wide angle. I'll talk about this a little bit more on, or maybe we can have another one where it gets a bit techy for people who just want to know the nitty gritties. I'm just trying to keep this general and light, but you are right. So the other ones that I've found on the market are the Nova Grade. That's one, and it's a double gripper. And it's basically essentially the same again, the same idea. You line it up inside, yeah, you find the light, bring it down to the light, make sure it's absolutely in the center of the lens and, and then you just tighten it up and there you go again. It's the same kind of idea, but they have different kind of um, plastic circles of, di of diameter for the smaller, tiny eyepieces up to the bigger lenses. So then that's what you've got. Now then, if we go back to the last one, um, is this, the other one is, which is the major one, which most people use. So we've talked about hand holding. We've talked about um, a universal one. So hand holding, it's possible, fiddly, very frustrating. Handheld jobby, if you're gonna make one, custom made little one for yourself, make two or three. Then we go to probably the people that have probably got the most sales around the world with this. And this is called phone scope. That's, that reads phone scope with a K and basically they've come up with the idea of a customized body for the majority of phones that are on the market current don't be thinking historically they may have it but if you contact them they may have it and their idea is quite simply is it's all plastic there's no metal bits so the idea is and this one has got two four grooves one two three four this would be suitable for you, David, and I'll, I'll sort one for you, where you literally, for the wide angle one, you strand it into that one, and then for the two times lens, you put it into that one. So it covers. There, are, there is another way around this where you can buy um, a, an app or an other things, but that's, you, can, you can do that. So I just want to talk about that one. Then I'm just gonna cover the whole range of adapters because people are going, I've got no money, excuse me, I've got money to burn, I don't care. So hopefully we've got that range of people with us. So the ultimate for me is, this is the cowl one. So off comes the eye cup, on goes the inner sleeve, very, very robust, it goes on. Then that just joins into there like that, and joins, and then the phone is in here, and all you do is tighten that up. So that's going nowhere. That's probably, ours is probably the most robust. The phone scope one, sometimes you might have to try and put something inside of it because it, it's, it's not as tight. The thing is, I'm, again, I'm, speak, I'm speaking with phone scope through um, a couple of my American friends to try and get this sorted for everybody. Because um, that's what I've done over the years. I've spoken to main, most of the major adapter people. Um, so that's probably the most, I know we mustn't forget my friends at Swarovski, who have got those, they've got one for them. Um, my, my, my good friends at Opticron, they've got one, Celestron, um, all these universal adapters. So um, there's many adapters. It, uh, if maybe uh, David can put my email thing up at the end. And if you're struggling, we can maybe have a one-to-one -one and I can try and help you because that's all I've done for 22 years is help people. So going on with adapters. So for me, uh, the adapters, it's a key thing. Once you're comfy with the adapter, it's one thing you're eliminating, the fact you're not struggling to try and control this thing. You forget, forget about it. The adapter takes the job on. So that's the adapters, David. That's where we're, so we've covered what we need. 
oh, we, have, we mustn't forget a tripod. <laughs> Again, yeah. that's important, but not as important as, say, for a camera. A phone, a phone, a phone and adapter isn't that heavy. But yet again, just again, take along your tripod if you can to a shop where you're buying the stuff or if you can see it online or you get the weight of it. It's pretty straightforward. You can probably get a little smaller, longer balance plate to balance it out. But most tripods that you buy will um, take the weight of your scope. Obviously, they will, plus the, the, the phone and the adapter. So, yeah. yeah. So, scope, eyepiece, adapter, phone tripod the five essentials really interesting talk about handheld because i've done a lot of handheld in my time since yeah i know you have it's frustrating <laughs> isn't it it is and i just i mean maybe i'm head stepping ahead of the game here maybe this is another talk but using this handheld has been pretty tough for me um on on the scope because i the, the <coughs> finding that like that light that you talked about it's bloody difficult it is it's not easy I mean, but you, but the one thing is, times. yeah. But what you need to do is, and I, and I hope everybody, this is like learning to walk or with the armbands in a swimming pool. You've got to take it slowly. You've got to learn, 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 learn what you're trying to do, because essentially you're trying to learn your equipment, try and suss out your field craft, take the picture or the video. Um, and then post-process it. So for me, there's like three areas, really. Equipment, picture, and, and editing the picture. Three things. It's three areas you need to be proficient on if you want that satisfaction where you see on the, the websites, that's an amazing picture, but how do we actually get there? So, so for me, probably the next, next conversation would be um, what other equipment do you use, Paul? <laughs> right, we haven't got all day. But essentially, what I've got is, on my cower and maybe of other people's, maybe your manufacturer allows you to use an extender. They've come in in the last few years. And so this takes my um, cower 2560 to something like 42 and 90 mag. And just for fun, a couple of bird fairs ago when we brought this out, we stacked them together and it went up to something like 123 mag. So it's crazy, crazy. But if you want something where you've seen something you don't want a dot shot, it's fine. But what I would say to you is, is any kind of photography, this is, the, this is the ballpark of what you've got to remember. The further you go away from a subject, it doesn't care if you've got the most expensive camera in the world. As long as you've got distance between you, air, heat, turbulence will cause the picture to be softer. Or you increase the magnification, then the image will be softer okay mm -hmm. so um for, for me the, the other bits and pieces that people really don't understand is i really wouldn't go anywhere in the field without a battery pack so again i've learned from my mistakes david that whole that said two charges a little one yeah i got one and a bit this one says five i get three out of it and so other people can actually charge with me as well. And it's got a fast charge. It's small enough to take abroad. It's not that big. But battery pack out in the field because the screen just absolutely eats battery. It's what it is um, for me. Um, other things is, may, may people might even think about it. Cleaning cloth. Why? Because in the daily use of your phone, you'll be gobsmacked how many much impressions of fingerprints you put on that phone at lens so every time you go out before a session clean it also the lens of your lens of your your eyepiece it's not so much the objective you probably keep that clean not inside it but the two lenses that matter to me are those um, other people said to me well what else can you do with with phones so people don't realize but what we can do is we have actually not talked about this yet, David, and I'll just basically touch on it because some people might, might even find the phone too much. So guess what we've got? Adapter, my binoculars. We now can go with the bins, eight or 10 mag. It's as simple as that. So yeah. that is that bin scoping? Yeah, <laughs> you're learning now, aren't you? 
This is bin scoping. So when I see people doing this, forget it. What you need to do is quick technique is once you've got it all sorted, and especially if you've got a, a camera that's a, a phone that's got two lenses, put it on the two times. It will probably clear most of the vignetting. And I suggest you cut you cup the, the two eyepieces together, the two objective lenses together, and then use your finger here, and you can use in and actually hold it tight, and then put put your elbow. That's bone. That's muscle shaking, especially on a trade picket. And so you can literally do it like that. Okay. Now then. That's a very good tip, actually, when it comes to actually holding binoculars per se, because I see so many people holding their binoculars like they're going to be flying somewhere, and yeah. there's a lot of you know pressure on your muscles holding up like that. The best way is to hold it with your elbows in, so your your yeah. elbows and your as you say your bones are taking the the, the pressure and not not doing it that yeah. like this. So let's let's slightly move on now to the other bits associated with the camera. So and the phone so you've got a choice to if you've got your native app your samsung your iphone whatever it's got its own camera app um and so you can either use your finger straight off and take the picture um a biggie if people don't realize it if you hold your finger on the button thank you claire yeah not a bad one that at all thank you if you hold your finger on your phone you'll get a burst mode People don't realize the actual, we'll go into camera settings next, but that's another one. So that's the first way to take a picture. The second way would be cold, cold day, dark day. It's not Florida sun, as I say to Jeff Bouton, God bless him. It's Manchester weather for me when I first started. Cold and gray and miserable. So I would then put it on a timer, put the, the mobile phone camera setting on timer. So I could press it five seconds and it takes the picture. But yet again, we're not in control of it. So two areas where you can do this is that some phones allow you to plug in, especially with the iPhones, you can use the headphones that come with it and the plus button acts as a shutter release. So you plug it in and when you just take the picture and you don't want to cause a vibration because your finger may actually cause the blur of, of the picture, pair of iPhone headphones and press the plus button and it will actually take a picture. And if you hold it down, it will do burst mode as well. So again, people also would then say to me, hang on, my Samsung, I can actually do voice command now. You can actually do voice command with some of the phones. So take a pic on, on, on a timer, take a pic with your finger, take a pic with the headphones, take a pic with your voice. So the options are endless. A Bluetooth, adapter for actually taking the pictures so connect it up to your phone it will stop and start video stop and start pictures to take funny, pictures because tim appleton um you know the british bird watcher british bird watch british is a british bird watcher but british bird <laughs> that's very true you technically you're right um he whenever i see him um traveling he's always got his little um button as well that he presses to take his pictures yeah, two things for me is that's you've got to charge it up and remembering it charge it. So a week or two weeks goes by and it might be flat. The good old that's always that's always going to work. So I always keep a spare because I've got loads of these with the amount of iPhones I've bought. So that's okay with that. Um, the other thing, little thing, it's probably a bit extravagant, but we'll come on to that in a, in, in a while. But is storage, David? Storage on your phone. So. Again, let's just take it to Android and iPhone. Android is pretty easy. Yes, Claire, this, this is where the little gems come out today. They come out to play for everybody. Um, what I do find is, is that people just buy a phone and they, they, they're not really thinking about the memory. Why would they? They're just buying a phone. But when it comes to this, this game, I've talked about the battery life, but also, shooting pictures and also video now with the iphones um you can go from now i think the lowest is maybe 32 gig or 64 you would fill that up in a blink of an eye so what i'm suggesting to people when they come to me which phones would you suggest from the iphone range and obviously the 11 pro max is a good one the one that david's shown but i would try and get the one with the biggest memory because it's a fixed memory in an iphone you can't put a memory card in. That's the, probably the drawback of the Apple system on the phones. If you go to Android, 
you've got that micro SD card. So my suggestion for the Android users is buy yourself two cheap cards. Use one for the family and everything, everyday stuff that you do and, put, and take two with you. Keep them. Keep the other one in a waterproof uh, bag. So if something goes wrong with the one you've got, you can still carry on. For the price they are, for the sake of you've gone abroad for a week or two weeks, where are you going to buy a micro SD card? So if you've got it with you and rel relatively cheap, it's there. So that for me was with the storage. The other thing I was just trying to show you was, um, I actually got one of these. So essentially, I can put this, I can put that into my, let's go on the camera, let's get the lens. There, that's what it is. So it's a, goes into my iPhone. If you could pull back a bit, because you're not focused. Yeah. There, is that okay? iPhone there, and then it goes into the computer with a USB or to a USB-C converter. And that's 128 gigabyte. And I'm about to do it now. This phone has got 10 gig left on it out of 128. So once you're finished with you guys, I'll just download all my videos onto this. It'll clear it all off. Sometimes you can keep it on the cloud and have to wait for it to download. That's another way of freeing up space. Uh, that's another one. I also have an app that um, cleans up uh, my, my disc. If any of you are familiar with... Um, when you've got like a, a, a Mac or, 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 a, or a normal PC where the, the internet files build up and you can clear, clear it down. I think my brother once, he cleared it on his phone. He got something like seven gig back. <laughs> and it was purely all the times he'd been on the internet. Because every time you go on the internet, it creates a little page. And you literally have hundreds and thousands of these. So by clearing your phone up, you can actually try and keep it running as efficient and fast as you can. Because a phone is just like a computer. Quick question. How do you clear your phone? Because I'm forever frustrated by my phone. I took a video uh, today, actually, when I was out on my walk. Yeah. My mammoth, my mammoth, <laughs> mammoth walk. First one. Well, you're a bit tired, aren't you? Jesus. I, I, my uh, my um, step my steps per day are 750 on average for the last 48 days. And today, because Spain allowed people out for walk, I did 14,000 steps. And I was wondering why my hips felt as if both hips felt as if they're made of wood and I've given birth to 14 puppies or something. I was just completely in pain. I couldn't understand why. Yeah, but, I um, anyway, I took a picture and I tried to uh, download, um, I, I sort of edited together this movie and downloaded it onto my, or tried to download it onto my library so I can send it off somewhere. And it said not enough space. And I was thinking, oh, come on. How do you, is there an easy way of clearing space on your phone for your photos? Right. Okay, people are still listening and haven't fallen to sleep. This is, where, this is where stuff like this, you can't really find it written down anywhere. There's probably a few one-stop shops in the world, and I'm one of them that does this. I, seriously, right? So the, <laughs> thank you, Claire. So for me, sorry, just repeat the question. The question okay. is, I get to a point, an invisible point, where my phone will not accept any more videos, for example. It will say to me, you haven't got enough space to store this. Um, how do I clear my memory or whatever? I mean, I suppose the obvious thing is to, to, to delete the videos, but sometimes when I do delete it, I still don't have enough space after a while. So how do, how do you actually, as you said earlier, clear your phone to give you the optimum space? Right. If you look on your iPhone, you go into Safari, and you scroll down three quarters of the way, it will come up with um, clear history and web. All waiting in bated breath. <laughs> we should have had some suspense music going at the same time here, my friend. So that's one way quickly of clearing it. The other one is to go through your phone and delete the videos and pictures you don't need yeah. and clear them off the screen. The other one is to see which programs you're running because programs actually hold images and, and, and video. So if you're not using it anymore and it was an old one, you haven't used it for a year or two, but it's still got about half a gig, get that half a gig back, delete it. Okay. The obvious one, David, is this, this thing here. You can buy various things what you can buy, but this will just quickly download it and then you can load it to your Mac and then up to your iCloud or onto your backup or whichever way is the quickest. Right. But keep your phone clear. 
So what I do when I come back from a, a session taking pictures, it's not uncommon for me to shoot a couple of hundred pictures. Um, why? Because I'm a bit of an OCD kind of guy and my method of taking pictures, I just go, there's two, there's two ways to look at this and I've probably got the set, these two types of people are in the room right now. People who just want to casually bird, take an image of what they see, move on. There could be people who want to spend time with this to get different images, different compositions. So I'll try and accommodate both here. For me, I have what I call, this is probably one of the biggest tips today for the phone scoping. If you've got a, you've got a sitting subject that's brilliant, not booted at all, might, might be looking around, but it's static. My suggestion is this, is that you focus on the bird through the eyepiece. You make sure it's central. And then what you do is you lock down the head of the, of the pan and the tilt. So when you take your hands off, look through again, the bird's in the center. Because invariably, when you put the, put the phone on, it moves off. And then people start looking for the bird from the screen. They're wasting battery. So the idea is having something where it's a routine, whether you're casual or not. If you do this, you will get more keepers. If you just casually, the, 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 the video head or the bird tripping head is not tightened down and locked down, you're going to be faffing. So the idea is to put that on, get comfortable. So for me, this is where it comes into now about the technique. Most of your phones will have the opportunity where you can touch the screen and you want to touch the screen where the bird is. This will lock the focus and the metering depending on the phone or whether you've gone to go and purchase an app. So phone scope for everybody who wants to know, they do make the adapters. I don't work for them. I should be on commission, but I'm not. God bless me. They make the app, the adapter. They make the Bluetooth. You can buy other ones as well. There are other cheap ones on eBay. Uh, but they also do a free app. So if people have got the um, phones with more than one uh, with more than one camera lens, that's for you. The other one I would suggest is Pro Camera. You have to pay for it. Four or five pounds in English maybe $5 in, in America, but that then has given you, um, along with phone scope, you can then start taking pictures in RAW as opposed to JPEG. Bit techy, but it means that, the best way to describe it, if you've got a picture in front of you now, and the JPEG is that picture, of that picture, you're seeing it as me and, me and David have been thinking, the JPEG is this big, but the, but the RAW would be this, physically this big, but there's more pixels in it. So if you want it to crop, and that's half the battle these days where people want to see big images, they crop the JPEG. But if you're taking it in either a TIFF file or a RAW file, which some of these, these apps have, you've got a bigger image. So that's the first thing to be looking at as well. But firstly, back to the technique. Once you put it on, you hold your finger down. Now, sometimes you can move your finger around the screen for the metering. Like some of the apps, you can have a square and a circle. One is the focus, one is the metering. Move the metering around the screen. Doesn't where you want to touch it. See, and just tap it on, see where it is. This is the static bird that's going nowhere. This is your practice stuff in your back garden. This is the practice where you take maybe a bottle that's got, um, it's got plastic ridges in it so you can get the sharpness right. It's got letters in it so you can actually concentrate on that and do that. So holding the focus down, You've done that, you're not touching it. You can now, finger can go to the manual, the focus, focus wheel on the scope, back and forth, back and forth to make it sharp. Happy days. And what people don't realize is you can put, this is my little secret weapon for people. This is called a Hudman loop, okay? And what this allows me to do is, it is a piece of rubber and plastic with glass in the middle. It folds down to being that big and goes in my pocket. I can also go around my head. This has got a diopter on it of plus three and minus three. So if you wish to tune it into your eye, you can do. And the idea is that once you've got that on there, remembering that most of us, if we've got the Florida sun or if we've got the uh, extra Madura sun, David, the sun should be on our back most of the times. Maybe we'll have some backlit pictures, but you can then put that on there and then go back and forth and get it pin sharp. 
Because what you find is, and this goes back to my biggest tip I'm going to give you all, is that I have a nervous twitch, even with the digiscoping and the phone scoping. I take a couple of pictures and then I defocus the scope and go again. Why do you do that, Paul? So if I've taken, so the casual person who's taken 10 and just stopped for two minutes, taking 10 pictures and moved on, I would advise them, every other one, to just defocus it and have a go. Because if you look through them 10, inevitably, you will find the one that's sharper than the others. Okay? Where some of this doesn't even need to be edited. So the way I do it, I have a cable. Here we go. We're getting techie now. This goes into my phone. That goes into my TV. And so I'm not looking at a tiny screen now. I can look at the screen on the laptop. I've got, I've got an HDMI on it. Or my TV, my 4K TV. This is the lens I take it to, to get my sharpness, my natural sharpness. So I use number one as the marker that I'm playing back. Number one is the marker. Number two, number three. Number three is better. Delete number one and number two. Number three is now my marker. Go further up. I'll probably keep two out of those out of ten. It's the same position, missionary position, doing what it's doing, blah, blah, blah. Now then, people like me might take 50 or 60. So I'm going to have that nervous twitch every three or four times. So all my files will contain majority of the time is the sharpest picture I could get on the day because I could be bothered to do something about it. Either using that eye and this finger, David. Right, right let, me, that's let, me, let me ask you at this stage, Paul, are you uh, up for taking questions or do you want to move on? Can people ask questions at this point? Yeah, fire in. Anyone, anyone for any questions? I mean, I've had five already myself. Anyone had, uh, have any questions at all? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what was the name of the app that you used? You had the phone scope app and something else you mentioned, and I didn't get it. Pro Camera, P R O C A M R A. It's about a fiver. Um, yeah. It takes some getting used to. The reason I like it is because I, I work for a company. Um, I work for two companies as a consultant, uh, Cal and Panasonic, and most of my shows when I go and do them, I have a 4K TV to play with so it's not a projection i have a 4k tv so i can either connect my phone up live or i can show my pictures live so i shoot in what's called 16 9 and that's the the file size you're seeing now long and thin if we go back to when i was a boy which is 50 odd years ago we used to get postcards and that was called 3b2 three inches by two inches or six by four with a lot of the camera in camera apps, you don't have much chance to change the format shape. I need it where I can do 4, 3, 3, 2, 16, 9. So the pro camera does raw TIFF files as well as JPEG. Um, if your phone, ladies and gentlemen, has 4K, go and look at it. So the other biggest tip today is if you've been afraid to look at that word called settings on your camera, Go and explore, because when I'm out and about, people say, can you, set my cap can you set my camera up? Inevitably, nobody's got it on the highest setting because they want to try and save pictures. If that's your aim, fine. But when you want to try and crop something, not going to happen. Secondly, if you've got the facility of 4K, use it. Why? Because you can always drop that down to 1080 in, in video editing. David, if we want to do another one just on video, we can do, because... I can go into <laughs> I have a lot more depth with this because you're booked. you're booked. Well, I should write a book really, but I think this is probably the more expre the more expressive way to show it. So, um, where were we going back? I'm chasing my tail now. You're talking about the um, uh, a techie talk. Yeah. Okay. We'll 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 organise another one. But what you need to do is you need to get send David the questions and then and also your equipment that you're using. Because you're remembering, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going blind here. If you start talking to me, I've then got to ask you what scope you're using, what's a tripod, what a camera you're using, what settings. If you can send those little bits of pieces through to David on the next one we do, and, it's, and also the subjects that you want me to do. Because obviously, trying to do a general one on phone scoping in, in, an, in, a, in the time frame we're using, um, I think a lot of it will go in. We're, we're going to try and do a live live feed in a minute I will, we'll go outside and see if we can actually do this david 
Okay. Um, Anyone else uh, has any questions at this point? Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, hi, Andy. Andy, oh. hello. Hi, Paul. Yeah. Um, just a simple question. I never know whether to have the um, the eye cup out or in when I try to put a, a, a phone scope adapter on. Quick, quick and easy you know way. I mean? Yeah, quick and yeah. easy way is place it, close it, close it as much as you can, and put 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 the phone on. Uh, what's a what's the scope? What's the phone? What's the eyepiece? Um, the, the eyepiece is a it's a Leica scope. Uh, Zoom IP 2550 and uh, an iPhone on an adapter. Which iPhone? Um, same as David's got, whatever it right. is. Right, okay. Something, 11. Quick question, which which lenses are you using at the moment, if I may ask? I'm using the just the standard normal lens, not the wide angle lens. Okay, There's, if it's three lenses, Andy, yeah, one will be a yeah. two times. One will be a yeah. wide angle and one will be a, a super wide angle. Forget the super wide angle. It should be a two times. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so if if you can get it on the two times, back. Andy, what happens is, uh, you see, the problem I've got is I've, um, I've not updated my 7 Plus as of now. I've had it three or four years. I don't know whether to go for this 11 series or wait for September because I'm, I'm hooked into the iPhone situation now. With the 7 Plus, uh, with my iPhone 7 Plus, and this may, may hopefully help you, I couldn't use the Apple native app when you switch it onto camera. I would get black. It would go black on the two times. The screen would just go black, electronics. It just wouldn't do it. So I had to search the internet to find so, um, apps that could allow me to choose, to physically choose in the app which lens I'm using. Uh -huh. And then I found with the phone scope and, um, and the cower, we put it on the two times because with a would your scope be the 82 objective no, 82 yeah, the, the smaller one 65 yeah okay so with a 65 with a 25 to 50 you have got a really really good setup my suggestion is that you use it purely on the two times when we when i go outside now and hopefully i can this one work we tried it before I want to show people who have never seen this before what the vignetting means. I also want to show them the limitations of what you can do. But from two years ago when Who Are We and, and, and Apple brought out the two times lens, what this has done, this has revolutionized phone scoping and people really don't get to this. They're probably using the phones and don't realize it. The two times has already got mag on it by the obvious definition of two. So the wide angle means that you've got this black corners of vignetting. If you double that mag, the black corners are gone. So you're starting at 50 mag because you're on 25 zoom, 25 to 50 zoom on the eyepiece. Very simple. But it's a lot sharper and it's a lot better. And with a wide angled eyepiece, and I'm sure that one is, yeah. you should have no vignetting at two times on that phone with that setting right. okay. Got that. Thank you. to answer your question your eye will tell you so put it down flat and put the phone on the adapter and then just bring it up to its full extension and see if the circle goes bigger or smaller of the yeah. vignetting that will tell you lovely thank you sorry mate we went round it and things but there was other things to bring up there at the same time no, that's good thank you you're welcome any more Anyone else? Come on, this is your time. I am here for you. I've even had a shave and I've had a shave and a shower. People get a bit shy now and again sometimes, as I've noticed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so okay, let's let's continue then, Paul. Right. Okay. So, shall we take a walk? Yeah. And see if I can get this actually working. We tried it before, didn't we? Where are you now, then? So, where, where are you in the world? I'm in my house. Yeah, where? Walking to the garden. Um, so, um, the camera app, where I could place my my finger on the scope uh, on the screen. But Robin's here now, and he's all he's tucked up. You can't see him. <laughs> Sod it. Can you hear him? Yeah. So basically, what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to try 
to attach this because I believe I've got a very special bird in my yard that nobody else has seen, okay? So I'm gonna literally try and do this. So David, bear with me. We'll see if this works. Oh, what have we got there? Can you see, Paul? Uh, yes, I can. I can just about. So I'm just going to bring that in now. So in answer to your question, everybody can see now that's the vignetting. Okay. So I've had to put it not on the two times eyepiece. I've had to put it on the wide angle eyepiece to make it work for everybody. But I needed to show people because majority of people will just have the one uh, camera in their phone. This is what you typically see. Now, remember, in my eyepiece is a 25 to 60 wide-angled eyepiece. Um, oh, come on, mate, just show yourself. <laughs> this is so frustrating. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zoom it in. And you can see now with the vignetting, you can see what happens. So that brings up another point is that you must, and all the things I've been telling everybody to do, is I'm just going to lock this down. David, I, you're going to have to be my eyes and ears. Tell me when it's focused, Sharp. Okay. Foc uh, focused, focused, yeah. Good. Blurred, blurred, focused, blurred, focus. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. <coughs> blurred. Yeah. Blurred. I'm going to go back left now, tell me. Keep going. That's it, beautiful, oh, no. Back a bit. That's it. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So there, ladies, and that's where I would take my picture. Now, unfortunately, oh, because I'm on the app called Zoom, I can't really touch the screen to meter it or clear anything else. So with your fingers, some people, you will stretch the picture a little bit. Yes, you can do that, and you can crop it. It's got a bit blurred, Paul. Hey, again. It's a bit blurred. That's a little stump you're looking at. It's blurred. That's it. That's beautiful. Perfect. So... That little uh, that, that Hoodman loop that I had that explains that side of it, um, and obviously we can obviously go take that from a uh, landscape position to a portrait position. So if the bird is quite long and thin in the picture, we would do that as well. So I'd also take pictures smaller and then focus it, and just literally. So some people would say that's fine. Just maybe pinch the screen a little bit out, not too much. Okay minimum minimum because you're stretching the pixels i try not to do it try and use the mu the muscle of the zoom um we're trying to obviously we're trying to get this sorted out here because it's a bit it's not it's, it's not as easy trying to do it through the electronics half of this problem we wouldn't see but there so what i'm trying to do is that's 25 that's 60. so it's just the other thing is you must try and make sure that the adapter is level or else you'll get this shadowing Again, I'm doing this on purpose now so people can see it. So if you just bring it back out again, you want that, that screen, and then you're obviously refocus again by touching the screen and holding it down. David, I'm not gonna labor that anymore with that. I'm gonna uh, bring that back to me. Okay, so anyway, that was my garden, people. He's up there somewhere and he's right, he's tucked in. I can't even see him, which is a shame. Um, anyway, we will... Uh, We'll come back. So it's back to me. Okay, back into my house. Everybody's gone AWOL because <laughs> nobody wants to be on camera. <laughs> okay. I don't know whether this will work, uh, David. Uh, is there any questions from that? Pardon? Anybody? Well, apart from the, apart is there from any the questions from that? that? I Paul, I'm just going to say that that's exactly what happens when I attempt to take a photo. I just get that black circle moving around and it's so hard to focus in. And it's and then when you lose it, you can't get it back. So I'm going to go out in the garden and practice in a bit. Claire, please talk me through your, your kit, what you've got, please, my love. What have you got? Oh, I've, I've got um, an iPhone 6S. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, I've got a Shirovsky angled and I've got a zoom. Uh, is. is it a small Swarovski or is it a big Swarovski? It's a smaller one. 60? Yeah. 65? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that would be a 25 to 50 eyepiece. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom. Um, again, 
David will give you my email. Let's talk off this and we'll see if we can help you a little bit more. Clearly you're struggling. Okay. Clearly I want to try and help you. Um, a lot of it David is, is just the whole practice thing. I and mean, I think that following the spot helps. Sometimes I get it perfectly and I get amazing shots, but it's knowing the technique and some of the little gems that you've just offered today, I'm sure they will help. Yeah. So thank, I mean, thank but, you for that. Yeah, yeah, you're, more, you're more than welcome. Eh? I mean, it's, it is fiddly. And as long as people don't try and compare it to... Um, it isn't we're doing we're, we're, we're exploiting something that wasn't that wasn't meant to be and you know to some of the some of the stuff that, that can be done on this now i mean david what i'm going to do now is if any of you want some inspiration from all of this um i'm just going to clear my screen um i've got some here david i'm just going to see if i can run this and i hope that it comes up Okay, so I'm now going to switch the fold, my lens over. Bear with me, people. Give you some background with this. I'm just going to give, show you a short movie I made purely with this iPhone about a year and a half ago. I live in deepest, darkest Hertfordshire, so I'm not far from Hertford. And for me to go north or northeast into Suffolk, Lake and Heath RSPB Fen, probably two years ago had the most showiest bittens ever and what i did was at the time i was getting the odd bit of i think the word people call it today is trolls where people just bait you to have a go at you and oh your, your quality is not good and it's not the same as photography and it's really bad and it was using other kind of words um so my dad told me a long time ago if you've got something a skill set don't even think about having an argument because the argument is lost. Whatever you're doing, just do it. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to switch the screen over and you're now looking at my screen and this is a film I put together and it's two and a half minutes long, so bear with us. I hope it's coming out all right. Is it coming out all right? It's all good. So basically, I phone scoped everything that was in that water, including little doodle bugs. Everything that was there. Again, we can do another session on this. That, that pit, that's at 60 mag. That is 60 magnification on that scope. Well, that was pretty action-packed. Well done. Nice film. That's not bad, is it? That's not bad at all. Um, some people were saying about pictures. Um, so just to, just to follow up with that, 
to explain to you that that took um, quite a few early mornings, which meant I was leaving the house here at three o'clock in the morning to drive one hour north to Lakenheath, run up the path to the, 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 the Mere Hyde, I think it's called the Mere Hyde, um, stay there till about 10 to 8, run back down the path sweating, jump in the car at 8 and get into work for 9 o'clock near Stansted. And I think I did that five times and I did two full Sundays for two and a half minutes of video. Do you know what? Never heard for them trolls again. Amazing. <laughs> well, that's purely, on, purely using the iPhone. So the other thing was where... Um, I, so the iPhone was handheld out of the window to do the pan shots and then it was attached to the scope to make the others um yeah it's all po things are all possible things are all possible um i'm very proud of that film to be honest uh rob wilton the guy at coward put that together for me with all the sound we had to put the sound effects in because obviously i'm i'm phone scoping across a, a small lake and there's no way we could reach it. But I think the drama, I love it where he puts the heartbeat in, it really comes across well. Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave it on that for that one. People said to me, oh, are you going to be showing some pictures? So um, I was want to go back and I was going to switch them over now. I'll just do a quick flick through some pictures. We tried it before, but I think it locked up the, thing, the screen. So we're just going to go onto my laptop and you can see, uh, hopefully, um, what's going on so bear with me two seconds make it big right so that's with the 4s that was on 60 times that was a rogue capicale up in scotland it was just an amazing time um you can actually see me in the corner of its eye it might go blurred but i'm actually in the corner of its eye um let's see if we can move this on so everybody's favorite I just love the idea of capturing movement. So when a bird has ruffled its feathers and you've got all that air gap, you've got that lovely, lovely air gap in between. So again, I'm just trying to find this. Um, now then, some of these pictures I've not actually edited. So I've done this to show you what is, what is capable of happening. So if I edited that, I would probably give it a little bit more contrast. It's quite bright on my screen. Um, but it just shows you. So we'll just go forward. There's another one there. I mean, Paul, could you tell us a bit about post-production? What, you know, once you're taking your picture, how quickly, how's the best way to crop it? You know, what programs are worth using? Do you just do it in the phone and the iPhone? Or, I mean, you showed me a great app I, I still use all to this day, which is the... Um, um, Snapseed. Snaps, yeah, Snapseed. So yeah, Snapseed, Snapseed, Snapseed. Okay. How best to edit your pictures once you're taking them? Right. The, the, the biggest. These are another another good tip. If you come across a picture you've taken and you think it's really really good, you're probably one of the best ones you've taken, and you can clearly see it's sharp. Email the whole picture to yourself. Create a file in your emails trays and put all your unedited pictures there. Most email companies will keep it all, yeah? That's the first thing I do. Now then, with most phones, the iPhone, you can have an edit system, but I can't see where you can save as. On the Androids, I believe you can do that. So you can do the basic functions to, to, the, to the picture. So that's why I found Snapseed, which is from Google, and it will work for Android and iPhone, and it's free. Um, the other thing that I use is uh, Lightroom Mobile which allows me um, to do more. So basically my pictures would be to, even with Snapseed, is to resize or crop, lighten or darken, saturation and some unsharp mask finish. So when I take some of my pictures, I literally will take 60 seconds. I know friends who spend hours layering it through into the laptop. If that's your beef, fine. But from a social media point of view, you're out and about, just want to, you're going back in the car, 60 seconds, post it. Um, the other thing to remember is people like Instagram, they want squares. 
um, they want square pictures when you're doing that. Um, some people, when they're on Facebook, you can take pictures in portrait mode and they do video in portrait mode. I much prefer video like this. It's the way of the, the youngsters, but that's the way it is. So Snapseed and, and Lightroom Mobile for me. There could be other apps, uh, but the, I always try and offer people the freebies and the ones that are a bit better, but you have to pay for. So yeah, so um, as I say, I don't spend too much time on them. The idea is try and get the picture right first time. So therefore you really don't have to just, you touch a picture up. We see so much evidence these days on phone scoping where their original picture bears no resemblance to what they physically end up with. Where some people think by doing the 200% on sharpening or saturation to 95 just makes the picture better. It doesn't. Little but often for me, David, a little but often. Yeah, because when you taught me how to do it, basically we sharpened that picture's literally spending no more than three minutes max, you know. Not because the other that. thing is, when you have loads of pictures, you know, you don't want to be spending all your life editing, do you? So you just want to do as little as possible. So as you yeah, said... And, and again, possible, and I think it's what, got, what, what Claire said, what Claire said um, was, you know, the practice. So if you've got kit and you've never done this, learn that camera setting, see what's behind all those um, headers and go and, or go and explore. You can always put your phone back to camera reset and put it back as it was, but the phone can do so much. And the things we've not touched on is probably um, the multi-burst I mentioned it. So holding your finger down will just take literally like a machine gun. Now, if people say, well, what do you use that for? Well, I, I use that or the 4K video. The 4K video, can be 30 frames per second. So really you can take one of those frames and play with it. So you can download it, even on the iPhone now, I can take 4K video and I can stop it at any picture and I can save it, I can screen grab it and, and, and do it that way. There's so much potential. Um, the other thing that people are talking to me about video technique, we'll, we'll talk about that another time, the video, because it's it's, it's quite deep and I'm still learning myself. I'm probably about three years into it now, uh, but it takes a lot. But back to your question, David, I think, I've, I think I've answered that in a general way. I could go a lot more techie on it, but just trying to keep it light really for the majority of people. Anyone else has, have any questions? Because we're, you know, we're, we're moving close to uh, where we say goodbye to each other. So can, you know, if you've got any questions, can you please ask them now? I've got one quick one. Um, Paul, are you a photographer or are you a phone scoper? I'm a birder. Oh, excellent. Okay. <laughs> because you've I'm a birder. A amazing techie knowledge, but also, I mean, it, it, stunning photos. And I was wondering where, if it was a, a photography angle, but no, brilliant. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, David, could you also put my, yeah, right. Basically, for me, is my background was as a child, I was born. Paul, are you with us? Paul? Well, it looks like we may have lost Paul for a second. Um, whilst we're trying to, or whilst Zoom is trying to get everyone back or Paul back, does anyone else have a question that they need to ask right now at all? Okay, were you back, Paul? Because we lost you for Am I back? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So quickly, Claire, did that. Then my father worked on a, on a, as a carpenter, so he was bringing me injured birds. So I, I, I got from an early age on that you don't give birds bread. So we put newspapers down on the grass in front of the flats overnight, wet them, and in the morning have worms. Um, I would do that. And then I went to um, Bambra for a holiday in the late mid 90s and I started seeing birds and I joined a bird club and then 1998 was when I first got involved with what I call birding where I was a guy on the road and um, I had a, a company car a fuel card and I would go everywhere and I, I turned into a twitcher for those of you who don't know a twitcher a twitcher is a person who just races around chasing all the rare birds up and above what normally we would see in this country so uh, I've spent a lot of thousands of miles on it. I've probably been to more islands in Scotland than, I, than Scottish people have. I mean, the Outer Hebrides is amazing. 
Um, I was hoping to go and see my good friend Davy Steele on the Isle of May off Fife. I was going to go and do something on puffins and seabirds. We'd already we were trying to line it up. Then we obviously got the coronavirus. Um, I'm going to do that. I go to Spain a lot because I like to go and see the the, the bird the the bird of prey hides over there. I probably know most of the uh, bird people over there, the Spanish bird guides, and obviously uh, the English people as well, like David and other people, like Simon Tonkin and Nicky and people. So, um, and now I've um, been locked in. So the pleasant thing today, going back to Claire quickly in a roundabout circle, is the joy for me today was see hearing, because I didn't take my bins out, we just took the dogs for a walk, was two common white throat and my first lesser white throat in God knows how long. I didn't think I saw one last year. Okay. So I just, just to hear it call. Uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'm waffling, but hey. No, no, listen, it brings me quite neatly onto two questions I need to ask you, which I haven't briefed you on actually, I should have done. <laughs> so the first question is, what's your favorite bird? They're, do they're both down to experiences I had and I'll quickly tell you them both, was the snowy owl. I took a male snowy owl on the Hebrides. And basically the reports had come on the twitching, so I drove up on my own. I was dressed in all woolies. I had a coat on, big heavy coat, and the bird was out on a big rock in a tidal estuary. And I literally spent nearly one hour stalking this bird. When the owl looked away, I walked three or four paces forward <laughs> and stopped. It took me one hour, and I did the most rookie thing that I tell people and when I got a reasonable distance to it I started taking pictures and I thought I've not checked any pictures and the exposure was plus on the camera so the, the snow white snowy owl with black flecks was literally whitened out so I quickly composed myself lowered it just under under uh, under exposed it a little bit spent another two three minutes with it and then I literally backed off from the bird and left it on the rock so I would wait until, again, until it looked when it looked away, I walked three or four paces back, and then when it's maybe 50, 60 yards, I turned around and walked away. That's one my number one time experience on my own. The second time was a couple of years ago, second bird, where I went to see, um, we went on holiday to the Cape Verde Islands, and I went to Sal. And I walked into this shop on the main street in the town, and it said, bird watching, um, quad biking, blah, 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 uh, walking with little sharks, lemon sharks in the, in the shallows. And the guy was Welsh, guy from Gold Jonathan, great guy. And he was, went to, I think he went to university with Chris Packham. And we got talking. I said, I'm desperate to see red billed tropic bird, that gorgeous, beautiful bird, that streamer's tail. So he went, phone call made a phone call the next morning I met these two guys who were on a project and the, the main project is um, biodiversity there where they try and look after the uh, the turtles uh, with education to stop uh, and, and stop the pollution and these two guys had found this um, colony that had been unknown to man and they had a, they had, they had a small uh, patch of um, down in the south went up to this place in the north it was like Mars volcanic red dust and everything and there was this colony of, of, of red-billed tropic birds. And they allowed me to sit on the rocky outcrop. And at any one time, I had nine or 10 of these. And I was digiscoping them, trying to get them in flight. And it's probably the most exhilarating thing I did until the next best thing was they were taking measurements because some of these birds were nesting in land. And they allowed me to hold a red-billed tropic chick. <laughs> that was it. Overload. That was it, David. That was it. Yeah, because that's, uh, I think, that's the red. Yeah. They're big birds yeah. as well, actually, related. Oh, to they're not uh, small, my friend. They're not yeah. small. They're in the pelican family, believe it or not, but they are yeah. very, like yeah. massive terns. But anyway, that, that's my two birds, my friend. Great. Okay. Now, whilst I'm here, let me just, well, whilst you're here, even all you Zoomers out there, um, just to let you know that there's um, a continuation in the In Conservation with series. We're going to have Paul back without a doubt, and it's going to talk. <laughs> I think we should do one on, on video, but also another uh, phone scoping session. Um, tomorrow we've got a, a gentleman called Magnus Robb, who, um, for those who may know, is with Sound Approach. And he's going to be talking, because he's a real genius when it comes to recording 
uh, migrating birds at night. So he's going to be talking about how to record birds at night. Um, so that'd be very interesting. On Monday, we've got a guy called Joel Ashton, who's one half of the Butterfly Brothers. And he will be talking about landscape garden, how to actually um, design your gardens for wildlife. So he'll be talking and demonstrating stuff on that day. Tuesday, we've got Stuart Winter, who's well known to a lot of people. He's a birder and he's also um, a journalist. He's, I think he works for the Express and he'll be talking about local patch birding. Um, on Wednesday, we've got Kate Bradbury, who is an urban gardener, and she'll be talk talking about how to, uh, to, you know, to give you tips in terms of your urban gardens. And on Friday, we have a young guy called Kabir Call. He's a 14-year-old kid that's taking the ornithological world by storm at the moment because he's, it, you know, he's, he's put together a map of London showing all the green spots. He's already been awarded by the British Trust for Ornithology. He's given the Marshall Award for his efforts to try and engage people with nature. So we were talking to him and hearing about his aspirations for the future. So, um, okay, if there are no further questions, then I think I'd like, on the behalf of all the Zoomers here, uh, to thank you, Paul, for sparing your Saturday afternoon when you could be watching your Robin outside. Um, <laughs> So coming Thank along you, Blair. and we're looking forward to seeing you again okay um so yes please everyone be safe take care and always look up see you again <laughs>